Hey everybody, Mac the Guy Skis here. Today we're going to do a tutorial on how to get your line art into a very clean format that's scalable. So we're going to use two programs. We're going to start with uh, Krita, but you might be using Photoshop or some other drawing program. The second program we're going to use is Inkscape. I'm just using a mouse for everything here. But for this drawing, I did use a Wacom tablet. And one of the first things that you need to make sure that you're doing before you even start the line work is uh, after you do your initial sketch, which I think I have my sketch in here somewhere. So after you do your initial sketch and you wanna lay in the, the line work for real, you got everything laid out kinda of how you want it here, what you're gonna do is increase the resolution of the image. So you would go to image, scale image to a new size. And when you do that, you wanna make sure that the resolution, especially the pixels per inch is up uh, anywhere between 300 and 600, really. Um, and that's gonna also increase the burden on your computer. So this is an area where you just need to, you know, do do whatever you, you can do on your computer. Basically, you wanna do that so that uh, there's more information for every line that you put down, that'll come in handy later. And I tried to do my best job, but no matter, how large the file is, you zoom in far enough, you're going to see pixelation, even if there's anti-aliasing going on, which you can see there is here. But I want it to be super clean. And the way that we're going to get it super clean is to put it into a vector program. So in order to do that and to get the vector program to trace the line work properly, we really want to make sure that we have nothing else in the background. We've erased everything else that we don't want in here. And then we're going to file and export or save as a TIFF, T-I-F-F. -F. The reason we want to use that format is so that we have lossless file information. Export it, and then we're going to close that program that we're in. We're now in Inkscape, and since this is a beginner video, I'm going to try to be very clear and pre precise about everything that we need to do. Um, we're going to first start off with making sure that we're importing the image that we had just talked about. So we're gonna go over here to file in our menu. We're gonna do import. This is also control I. And then we're gonna find the file. Uh, I made sure to label mine because I have multiple spiders in here, uh, lossless file. So I'm gonna select that so I know it's the right one. You can see right here, you have options. It says image rendering mode, none, smooth, blocky. And I want this to be at none because I want all the information from the original file. I, we're not going to be doing any scaling. This, this may not be a huge issue, but if you do some scaling, it might mess up some information. So we'll just import that real quick. It'll come in already selected. If for some reason you've clicked off it and you need to select it again, you're going to click on this arrow up here or hit S on the keyboard. And then you can click on the object again. And we'll move it over onto our canvas. Now that our TIFF file is imported into Inkscape, we're going to start the process of having the program automatically trace the line work and make it uh, more scalable to any size, large uh, or small. Large being most important. It's always easy to reduce it to a smaller scale. With vector graphics, we have the option to infinitely increase it. Just for visibility is we're gonna put a white square behind a portion of the spider that I have here. I'm gonna click in the top left to where this rectangle is. This is just a square tool. I'm gonna to put it like that and it's black, but then I can click down here in any color I want. I'm gonna make it white. And then the next thing is to put it in the background. On the right side, we have multiple menu options. One says objects, click there, and you can just click and drag and drop that underneath image. Uh, let's rename image. I'm just gonna double click and call that uh, original line work. And then the rectangle is called rect, so we know it's a rectangle and we're all good here, okay? Now, uh, you might wanna save your progress as you're going along. I'm not gonna save it just because I'm being daring and risky, that's why. The next thing is we are going to go and we're gonna zoom in to this portion of the image by using a plus sign and then the minus sign is zoom out, plus sign is zoom in, right? We're gonna be doing that a little bit. A plus sign to zoom in. And as I said before, this is just the same file. So if you zoom in enough, you're gonna see the pixelation and the anti-aliasing where it's a little bit uh, gray. Let's lock this rectangle. We're gonna lock it by clicking the lock right there. Uh, the eyeballs here make it visible or invisible. 
And then you also, once you have the object selected, it just works just like layers. You can change the opacity on those as well. Opacity, opacity. And then I'm gonna wanna look at this part of my spider. So I'm gonna hit spacebar and then left click to kind of move it more into center. Okay, so now we get to the part where we're actually going to be tracing this bitmap. And the reason that I'm making the video is because it took me a while to figure out what works best with this black and white kind of going for the crisp line art instead of a, a color tracing. So we're going to go over here and we're going to hit S. S is a select tool and we're going to make sure we click on a line. It'll also tell us in the bottom banner, it says image 2480 by 3508. Again, I drew this in a larger um, resolution. And so if I wanted to scale this up to like a 30 by 40 poster, I could do that after I've done this tracing. So I had that selected real easy. I'm gonna right click and then click on trace bitmap right here. And what that'll do is open up the trace bitmap menu on the right side of the screen. So we're gonna spend a lot of the time on the right side of the screen over here. And we really don't need fill and stroke. Let's kind of move these around. Let's keep objects and trace bitmap. We're gonna go back and forth between these two quite a bit. The long and short of it, let me go through that real quickly for those of you that are impatient, right? So what I would suggest is that brightness threshold goes to 99, 0.99, it only goes up to one. If you have it at one, it'll be uh, completely dark. Single scan, brightness cutoff, uh, speckles. Depends on your image, but for this one, it's gonna be an eight. Smooth corners, uh, I'm gonna put that all the way up for this image that goes to 1.34. Then optimize, I'm gonna put that all the way up to five, which is the maximum, uh, again, for this image. And then I will update that and I will click apply. And what happened on our screen there is it just went from the uh, regular pixelated image to the vector image. So. Uh, what I can do is go to my object screen. It's real easy to see the difference. I just click the eyeball on the original line work. That's without any of the original line work. So this is now scalable however much I want to scale it up, right? And I, I can also use other editing tools within the vector program to manipulate things. So then if I was happy with this, I would just get rid of the or original line work and uh, I could rescale it and I'm good to go or start working on it in this program. If you want to know why I chose things, uh, or if you chose those same settings and it didn't work for your image, you may want to watch the rest of this, where I go over each of these options and kind of talk about how I got to that as the best. And I'll give you a range of things that'll probably work for you. So uh, first off, let's, uh, let's revert these settings back to what they are originally, okay? And then we're going to go into our object setting, and we're just going to delete that new path. Whenever a um, information is put into a vector program, it's called paths and objects. So we're gonna just right click and delete that path. I'm gonna open the eye and my original line work is sitting right here again. And I, I wanna zoom in real close to this. So here's the problem that I, I keep going back to. This is a good spot right here. Because we're drawing in uh, our drawing program with different styles of brushes and sweeps and uh, tapers, and you know we want it to feel like an actual brush or pencil, charcoal, we're gonna have residual marks all over all over our line work. If you don't want these, honestly, it would be best just to draw in a completely hard round uh, tool. But I tend to do my work in brushy brushes. So we have all this residual information left over and that makes this whole process a little more tricky. Especially we have these speckles, which are you know places on the image where I missed it. So we're gonna deal with these things here. The range that I would recommend, first of all, we are gonna do single scan. Uh, we're gonna use brightness cutoff. These are the, the different methods by which the computer will try to process your image, but we're gonna use brightness cutoff. Okay, so if you are still watching this video or if you're watching this part of the video, please consider giving me uh, a like or a comment. Comments are even better because, uh, you know, I'm a very, very small channel and I'm fine with that. But I like knowing what people have to say or what you're interested in relating to the videos.
And especially because I'm having a hard time with this one. This is like a 20 minute video. And this is the third time that the OBS has crashed on me. I lost my audio and the editing and it's just turned into this an entire nightmare. And I'm really just trying to help people out and help my future self out for whenever it is that I forget how to do this and have to go back and try to relearn. I would really appreciate that. Thank you. So a pro tip, if I'm not on the actual line, I'm not actually selecting it. So go to a darker part to click on it, and then you'll be able to click and move the whole thing over. So for the brightness threshold, we're going to change this between 0.7 and 0.9, because it only goes to one, right? 0.7, so it's like 70% to 90%. That's the range. That's um, the range of possibility. It will default you at 0.45, and I found that that wasn't good for this black and white line art. And we're gonna apply it here. Remember to select your image to trace. So go in there and select your image with the S key and then hit apply. And then where, there we go. Before you realize it, it is done. So here is the, let me go in, we'll zoom in a little bit. Here's the uh, new path without the original underneath it. And then here's the original. Original, new path. Okay, so depending on how you like the, the line work, this might work for you. You do notice that if we zoom in a little bit more, we get some pixelation right here from the speckles on the interior. But overall, it looks pretty good. This isn't that bad. Now, my line work isn't amazing, but that's my fault, right? But the vector copy of it is pretty good, all right? And that's what we get from an automatic trace that we, we don't get... Um, if we had gone in here and done all this manually with all the other tools, and I could do another video on that, I actually think that might be a slightly better method, especially if you're gonna colorize this. If you're gonna go in and, and drop colors into everything, you might wanna use a different method for inking altogether instead of doing it originally in Photoshop or, or Krita. And I'm aware that Krita does have vector tools and so does Photoshop, but Inkscape has a more versatile list of options and utilities to use. So going back to our trace bitmap here, this looks pretty good. But if I wanted to get like all the little lines and whatnot, and I didn't want to smooth my corners, I wanted all the jaggy goodness of, of my spider, I would turn that off, okay? And then I would also play with this until I get up to one that I like, between 7 and 99. And now I do have some speckles on here. If we zoom in really close, you can see some right here. And... If you're not sure how big it is, like I look up here at my measurements and I've changed it to pixels because it defaults to millimeters. I always change it to pixels. Uh, this is, uh, the width is 793 by 1122. So I'm looking at this little smudge right here and a couple smudges where I didn't erase. If I want to know exactly how big that is, I can uh, go ahead and kind of draw a little box over it. And it'll show me on the top left how big that box is. Again, I got to change it to pixels. So it's about one by one and a half. So I would go by the larger number and that would be like two by two. I'll go ahead and say, you know, I would probably start at four by four. When I'm, I'm thinking about speckles now, if I wanted to, to get rid of speckles, we could put it at four and then I would go up from there and preview it and see how it looks. I think eight works the best, specifically for the brush and the marks that I have left on mine. So I would click that. I'm gonna not use smooth corners this time and everything else is good. So I'll apply it. And notice at the bottom it says select an image to trace because I didn't select one. Click S, click on the line work again. We'll try apply again. And you can see the difference here. I did not smooth my corners and you can see how there's, there's just some jagged marks. And it's a, it's a style choice. Do I like that? Do I not like it? Is, it? is it too much? Is it too little? And I have to remember also to get rid of the original line work. You'll notice that those speckles are gone that were right here. Those were not included in the math that the computer had to process. And I don't know, I, I kind of like that, right? If I didn't like that, I would, again, delete this path Go back to trace bitmap, select the bitmap, click on smooth, hit apply again, 
And that's how you, you kind of, you got to play with the settings back and forth. Just always make sure if you're doing that to take the original line art off, zoom in, zoom out, and then you're free to play with it. If you've done a good job and you, you managed to get all of your lines closed, you could use this real easily to fill in color. Like if I wanted some, oh, you change all the line work. But if I wanted to change like that to yellow, boom, it's done. And if you zoom into that, you're going to see it's, it's, it's line to line. It's yellow to black right there, which is really good. But you'll also notice right here, let me use a different color, maybe blue. See how easily I, I switch the color? That's the benefit of a program like this. You'll notice that there are a lot of spots where the vector won't catch it. And that's the difference of working in a different program and coming over versus working in this program from the get-go. You have a lot of options and utilities that you can use. And yes, I could click and go in here and modify this node and um, adjust this and then go in here and, and look at this node and delete that. This is the sort of nudging and painstaking work that can happen when you're starting to try to color this. See how it's, it's kind of a pain right now? Probably something like this. And then we can reduce that down and move it around however we need to. Oop. There we go, like that. So there's, there's a, an intense amount of control that you have with the, I keep saying with this game, uh, with the software, but there it is. That's how you do the basic tracing of a bitmap into a vector. So this is fully scalable. If I wanted to, I could scale this, you know, it, like I said, it was around a thousand. If I wanted to scale it up to my desk monitor, which is 1440p, we could export that from this program and it wouldn't be a problem at all. And you don't lose any of the detail. It'll scale as large as you want it to scale. Of course, my drawing could be better, but there it is. Comment if you like, like if you do, and thanks for watching.